Hello everyone, my name is Chris Duncan. We're here in our warehouse studio in Lubbock, Texas. We've got a great program today. We're gonna to be using one light and one light modifier in creating at least six distinct portraits, maybe more than that. So what we're gonna be doing is our pro photo um, uh, strobes, and I'm gonna be use, choose to use a one by four box for every one of these images. We have our lovely model, Isabel, that's gonna help us out. So let's go and get started. Um, like I said, one by four box. So up here on a boom, I have that one by four. I call this my butterfly box. Um, and notice I run it long ways, kind of perpendicular to the model. And what that will allow it to do is light her face beautifully and give a wonderful fall off to the floor. Okay, so I'm back at the camera. Isabel, you're looking great. Kind of shift your weight to one hip. Yeah, I like how you're, is that a hair, is that a bracelet or a hairband on yours? Okay, perfect. You know, just right below the elbow. That's nice. Right there, lift that head up just a little bit. Perfect. Okay, and bring that knee over just a little bit like that. Excellent. And a little smile for me. Perfect. Okay, so just like that, we have one unique, distinctive portrait that you can see right now. And so that's with our butterfly box method. And now we're about to do another one. Okay, welcome back. We're still with Isabel. We still have her one by four modifier on our pro photo. Um, this time I want to do a dramatic profile type lighting. So I've kind of have it slightly behind her if we were on planes and it's angled just a little bit. So this part kind of hits her face and the bottom part of the box doesn't hit as much of her dress because I really want to focus on the headshot area. So you can kind of see that orientation and she's going to be looking off. So we get a nice profile um, of her face. Remember we're doing one light modifier and six different portrait looks. Okay, one adjustment, Isabel, on your left hand that's kind of flat. Just kind of curl those fingers like you're rolling a, yeah, holding a pencil or rolling a booger. That's good, right there. That's nice. Um, turn your face a little towards me, just a little bit, a little more, right there. Perfect. Very nice, that's good. And now take your face back to kind of where you had it the first time. Excellent. And now just think a little more dramatic, kind of drop your eyes, drop your head and your eyes down just a little bit. Eyes closed, just down. There you go. Yep, just like that. Lovely. Per yeah. You'll be a little more upright. Fantastic. So that was Deanna giving Isabel a little bit of posing advice. Uh, I don't know if you could hear her, but being on her hip and using her abs to hold her up. Okay. Looks like she's going to make a quick little adjustment again. And bring that hand over that wrist. Nice. And you can cross your legs a little bit more to give you a little more balance. Like, over oh, there you go. So now I just want to do like a standard Rembrandt style open loop portrait. So I have my one by four box again, kind of in that 45 degree position. And I am using a reflector, which doesn't break our rules because it's still only one light. This is a continuation of that light, just to kind of act almost like a kicker to fill in just a little bit of this area. So I've already metered it and we're ready to take Isabel's portrait. We're doing six unique portraits with one modifier. Very nice, Isabel. Turn your nose slightly towards the light. That's good right there. And give me a little bit of a smile. That's perfect. And I'm going to do one little closer horizontal orientation right on. Nice. Let it out. <laughs> and there you go. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So we got a beautiful Rembrandt style portrait, traditional portrait of Isabel. That's number three in our list of six. So let's go to the next one. Isabel changed outfits. And so now, now if I'm, my count is correct, we're on number four, our fourth unique portrait look using just one single white and one single modifier, the one by four strip. And so here I want to create a little bit more of an edgy fashion look with a really defined shadow on that wall, almost like it was a white brick wall outside. So it's a sunshine type thing. So to do that with this modifier, I need to move it farther away to get a bigger spread like we would from the sun. And the farther it gets away from our subject, the harder that light quality becomes. So that shadow edge will get sharper. And I'm going to do one more thing to give me a little bit more pop is I am going to remove the front diffusion panel of this to give me a little more. But that Velcro's sorry, it's loud in the. 
I'm going to remove that diffusion panel, and they'll give us a little more specularity. I can even see it now in her eyes, so her catch lights in her eyes should be really fantastic. So, back to the camera. That's good. And Dan, if you'll scroll here, I think people might conceive in the shadow I'm producing on the wall, just from the modeling light. So, yep. Yeah, I like, I like the chin up a little bit more towards the light. Eyes still on me, but there you go. Kind of a little attitude look. There it is. Yep, that's the look I was wanting. Go ahead and get into that wall. Like maybe, yeah, a, sh a shoulder, yeah. And you can bring one hand down, just kind of like that. And I like how you grabbed your dress like that. That's nice. Good. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And I kind of want a nice laugh, like, ha, <laughs> Perfect. So what we there is we produced a really hard edge shadow, lots of specularity, lots of nice texture because the light source was farther away, and by taking out this diffusion panel. So now we're going to use the same dress and the same set to create a very, very soft light quality. And that's what we'll do when we come back. Okay, so now we're back and we're still doing, I think this is number five. Um, still using the one by four modifier, but what I'm doing now is I'm, photo, I'm sending that light through a product called Transloom, T-R-A-N-S-L-U-M. It's by Savage Paper. This is the medium weight. So I'm still using my same single light and modifier. I'm just adding extra diffusion through this Transloom. And what this will do is make that small one by four modifier into a big, almost window-like type softbox. So as we come around, we got her against the, Isabel's still against that brick wall. I am going to photograph a little tighter. Um, just since this is a softer light, I want it to just show more of the softness of the dress. Uh, so about waist up. And kind of give us a nice high key look. So, yep, that's good. Still, that's perfect. Head a little bit toward nose this way, so I get light in both your eyes. Very nice. Lovely. <laughs> you just kind of keep playing with their hair. You don't have to hold it. There you go. Good. Oh, that's nice right there. Do that again, kind of to that shoulder. Perfect. And bring that hand down just on top of, that's it right there. Good expression. I'm going to do one more. Let's do it this way right there. And awesome, Isabel. Fantastic. Okay, here we are. Again, we just shot through the Transloom to create a nice, large, soft light look because, you know, you need a big light source to get soft lighting. So maybe you don't have Transloom or a big diffusion panel like that. One thing you can do is bounce off something white. Um, of course, we're blessed in our studio with a nice big psych wall, a uh, high key wall or sweep. If you don't have that, just a roll of white seamless paper that you can roll down will work the same. Or if you work on location somewhere, maybe finding a white wall in a client's home or at an event center or something like that. So it's no different when we bounce our flash into the ceiling. Now I'm just bouncing this one by four box into the white wall to, to create a larger source to come back to give me nice soft lighting. I did take the diffusion panel off just to get a little more power because now the light has to travel a little bit farther. So I did take the diffusion panel off. That's not nece necessary, but I chose to do that. So, we're, so Elizabeth, we're gonna do something nice. And, yep, I like that, nice and soft. Here we go, pre-metered, I think I was at F8, heading this way so that nose is towards the light. Lift your head up just a tad, perfect. Beautiful, and then I wanna do one more, a little more full. There you go, you can let your hands down. I'm gonna go right, right below your knees, so maybe just do like this, do like this. There you go, and bring that knee over like you got a TT. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. I just wanna make sure the light because it's angle of incidence equals angle of reflectance. So good question. So I positioned it where it's going to hit the wall and come in this way. So it's still kind of at that 45 degree pat pattern on her face. And I wanted the light a little bit higher. So then it's coming down when it comes to her instead of straight on where it's coming straight across. So that helps produce a little bit more of that downward angle. Okay, here we are on number is this six, seven, <laughs> eight. I'm not sure. You can keep count. One more, a different look using the same box, okay? So if we go behind here, this is what I call my soft silhouette. Most silhouettes, you know, are very hard outlined when you're photographing against a sunset or something. But I like to do them really soft where you still get that silhouette feel, 
but there's not, you still see roundness and depth to it. So again, we're using our transloom. The light is coming through the transloom. But before I was photographing kind of parallel, uh, perpendicular to the transloom, now I'm going to photograph straight into it. So it goes completely white. Isabel will be wrapped up in shadow, but we'll still be able to see distinctly that it's her and have some softness and shape to it. So this is a nice little addition um, for your sessions to just kind of give a unique look. Black and white looks fantastic on this. So I've switched my camera to monochrome and beautiful pose right there. And just got these nice silhouettes. You can really focus on, you know, distinct features of bone structure and such during this. So, yep, that's nice. You can change that, Isabel. Just and maybe drop that hand a little bit. Maybe pull it all the way down. And now I want you to rotate your body just a little bit towards me and bring your arms where there's a little separation so I can really highlight. Yep, that's fine. Just the curves now. There you go. And you can turn your head a little bit towards me. We'll still get to see. Not Yeah, it's fine. And I know I like the profile more. So we're going to go back to the profile. That's it. Very nice. So and you can see on, you, did you stop? No. So you can see on the, on the image now, when you get really close, you can still see a highlight to shadow transfer as opposed to just like a cutout silhouette. So we still know it's Isabel. It's just a unique way to do a silhouette that for a senior album or something like that, it's a perfect addition. So we've got one, no, two more looks to do. So that was seven. So we've got two more looks to do, and uh, we're going to set up the next one. Okay, so here we are on look number eight. Yes, this is look number eight. And kind of like a traditional, uh, maybe not traditional, but a little more higher edge, Peter Hurley-inspired headshot. So before we had the box on the boom, it was remember, it was angled like this with our model. Now I have it horizontal. Um, to create more of a catch light across the entire top of the eye, still produce a downward shadow. And then we're using the uh, eye lighter as the reflector underneath. So it's kind of a nice fashion inspired, high key, nice and bright headshot look. So Isabel, that's great. I want you to just kind of lean forward up on your, like move your elbows out. There you go. Good. I'm just crossing at the wrist. That's nice. And of course the gray seamless paper is just such a great look. Um, for business headshots or portraits or um, it's just so neutral and works great for all of them. That's nice look right there. Excellent. Good. Good expression. Give me a little bit different face. <laughs> and before you were going to lean forward and kind of put your hand up, we can do that too. Just to bend that wrist in. Yep. There you go. And try to lift your chin up a little bit. So maybe, yep. Just, there it is. Good. And a little smile with your eyes. Fantastic. So as you see when these images come on, they kind of have that Peter Hurley inspired look. Front light, downward shadow, nice and bright and refreshing and stylish. So we've got one more look to do with a single light. Okay, here we are, our last um, one of our little segment doing different unique portraits with one light. And so the point I wanted to add this one, we debated whether we did this one or not, is many times with high school seniors or that age group, we might lay them down and have books around them or record records that they collect or their shoes or maybe they're in a field of flowers. And so when we sometimes, you know, we're used to photographing everything upright and the light's kind of in this position towards our subject. And when we tilt down, sometimes we just leave the light there. And so we need to think that our whole axis has shifted. So. Now that she's laying down, I've got to think of this as the floor and that as the ceiling. So that's why I position my light in this way using the boom arm. It's slightly above her, so I still kind of get a downward look. I still don't want light going up her nose like we would on a, we'd never light her standing up that way. So it's important that we think about that when we start tilting our camera down, that now our axis has shifted. And this may look a little strange how it's kind of parallel to the floor. And this is just the way it would feather. We would might feather our light away from our subject standing up. And here we just feathered away from the floor. So if you can kind of just shift your head sideways a little bit, it probably looks normal. But when you first see it, it may look a little strange. But that's what we're doing. And that's why we decided to maybe add or to add this type. So I'm going to stand on this little step stool. I've only fallen like once doing this. So I think we're good. Bring that hand that's coming across your waist just a little bit. Yep. And do it where if you could see your knuckles. 
like if you look down, you would be able to see your knuckles. So there you go. And roll your head into the, that way just a little bit. Good. And try not to give me the double chin. I know it's tricky. There you go. Big laugh. Ha 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 ha. Yay. Excellent. Okay, guys. So that's the nine different, nine unique portraits we created using just one light and one modifier, a one by four strip box. And so the point of this kind of uh, episode or seminar today was just to let you be creative and think you don't have to have a lot of different tools. You don't have to have a lot of different modifiers. Understanding the foundations of light, the size of light, how you place it, how inverse square works, angle of incidence, all those technical things that sometimes make our heads hurt. Once we understand that, then we can use a simple modifier like this and create different things. So get creative. Use white walls, bounce off mirrors and windows and through shower curtains if you don't have a translum. You'll be amazed at the unique images you can create with simple tools. So thank you so much for joining us today and happy creating.